G'day again. Question 26. So we'll start with part A. A farmer used the capture-recapture technique to estimate the number of chickens he had on his farm. He captured, and, he captured, tagged and released 18 of the chickens. Later he caught 26 chickens at random and found that four had tags. What is the estimate for the total number of chickens on the farm? Well, if you know how to do capture-recapture, this is a cinch. You can just go, okay, I've got 18, I want to multiply by 26 divided by 4. So you just go 18 multiplied by 26 on 4 equals 117. I've got 117 chickens and that's done. Pretty easy. What if you don't remember that? You're in the exam, you go, wow, that's a lot of words. I can't remember capture-recapture. Well, maybe if you write them out. So here's another idea for you. If you can't remember what numbers go where, just write down tags and whatever thing it is. In this case, it's chickens. It could be fish or birds or whatever. So in this case, we write chickens. And just do two columns. Once you've got the total of this column, that's your answer. Because as soon as you've got all your tags back, whatever this number is, that's your answer. So how many tags do we get each time? Well, we get four tags every time we do the later catch. So we're looking for the later catch, four tags. So on the later catch, I'll catch four tags and I get 26 chickens. How many tags, how many tags do I want all together? I want 18 because I've already tagged my 18 tags. So I want this column to add up to 18. As soon as I've got my 18, Whatever this column adds up, adds up to, that's my answer. So if we do another catch, we're going to catch four more tags with 26 chickens. Four plus four is eight. So keep adding them. So add another four. Add another 26 chickens. Four plus four plus four is 12. Not there yet. So we'll add another four. Four plus four plus four plus four is 16. Nearly there. If I add four, I'm going to go too big. So I only want to add two of them. So if I add two more, I'm going to have my 18, but because that's four, I now only want to add 13. So now if I add that up, you know, amazingly it adds up to 117, that's my answer. So that's another way you might think of doing it. If you're stuck, if you can't look at the question and go, oh, I know what to do, it's just that calculation, you can write it down, get back all your tags, and that's your answer, and you're done. 26B. Clark's formula is used to determine the do dosage of medicine for children. I'll give you this formula. Dosage equals weight in kilograms times adult dosage divided by 70. The adult dosage of medicine contains 3150 milligrams of, of a particular drug. A child who weighs 35 kilograms is to be given tablets each containing 525 milligrams of this drug. How many tablets should this child be given daily? A lot of words, but the, the question is actually not, not too difficult. It's just a lot of words for you to read through. So first of all, you've given a formula and there's words in there. I would solve the formula and find out what this dosage is, regardless of what's going on in the question. But you need to do that anyway, but that's what I would do. As soon as you see something like that, think, okay, can I put the numbers in here to figure out what this is and then reread the question. So what is the weight in kilograms? Well, the child weighs 35. So our dosage is going to equal 35 multiplied by the adult dosage. So what is the adult dosage, which is here? Uh, yeah, the adult dosage is 3150. You're going to divide it by 70. Press that on your calculator. And you get 1575. If you're sharp and you're pretty alert, you should realise that you've got 35 on 70. Well, 35 on 70 is a half. So really you're just halving that. If you're not alert, punch it in your calculator. And you get this number. And then you reread the question, you go, yep, I've done that, I've done that. The tablets contain 525 milligrams, right? So this is the dosage for the child. Each tablet contains this much. How many tablets do I have to give to get all this into the child? Well, I'm going to go this divided by, whoops, not minus, divided by 525, and that equals 
three tablets. And that's it. But like I said, a lot of writing for a fairly simple question where you just put the numbers in the formula, divide by what each tablet is, and then you get three tablets. G'day again. 26C, a lot shorter this time. Two cities lie on the same meridian of longitude. One is 40 degrees north of the other. What is the distance between the two cities? Correct to the nearest kilometre. Pretty straightforward question. You only need to look up two things on your formula sheet. One is, it tells you the radius of the Earth is 6,400 kilometres. Next thing you need to look up is the arc length, which is 360 times 2 pi r. Okay, so you need that formula, and you need that, that's the radius of the Earth. So you've got two cities, there's one, there's the other one. If we're going to the centre of the Earth, assuming the Earth keeps going around, that radius is 6,400 okay, kilometres. So you're finding this distance here, which is this arc length. You just put 6,400 in there, where your radius is, 40 degrees in there, press it on your calculator. So you're just going to go 40 over 360 times 2 times pi times 6,400. Punch that in your calculator and you get 4468 kilometres. And you're done. 26E. The table shows the relative frequency of selecting each of the different coloured jelly beans from packets containing green, yellow, black, red and white. Now they leave red blank. What is the relative frequency of selecting a, gel a red jelly bean, which is the one they're missing? So this should be pretty straightforward. You should know that if you've got frequencies or relative frequencies, that these should add up to one because that means you're guaranteed. So you're guaranteed to pick one of them, so these have to add up to one. So if you add up these, so you just go 0.32 plus 0.13 plus 0.14 plus 0.24 on your calculator, you get 0.83. Right? So all you've got to do, one take away that and you're done. One minus 0.83 equals 0.17. So the relative frequency of a red one is 0.17. Pretty straightforward. Based on this table of relative frequencies, what is the probability of not selecting a black jelly bean? So there's black at 0.14. So if we look at the second part. That's your first part. You look at the second part and you're pretty much going to do the same thing. So if it is black, it's 0.14. If it's not black, it's anything else. So you're really looking at this same sort of pattern of 1 minus 0.14. 1 minus 0.14 is 0.86. So you've got 0.86 of a chance. Now they usually like probabilities presented as a fraction. So instead of this would be you know, 86 over 100, so you should simplify that. So 86 over 100 would be 43 over 50. Okay? It means the same thing, but that's usually the way you would express a probability as that sort of thing. Uh, sometimes there's a percent, so it would be 86%, but this tends to be the way. And you're done. 26 D. A family currently pays $320 for some groceries. Assuming a constant rate of inflation of 2.9%, how much calculate how much will be paid for the same groceries in five years' time? It's a very simple question. All you're doing is applying a compound interest rate. This is your compound interest rate, and that's your money. So you're just applying this formula. Okay? Because it's constantly going up by that rate. So 1 plus R is 1 plus 2.9%. So you're just going to press 320 multiplied by 1.029 to the power of 5. Yep. Press that in your calculator and you get $369.17. And you're done.